In a previous video, I demonstrated and performed a set of experiments that can be used to objectively test and compare different brands of chalk. Four different tests were used to determine the amount of clang, skid, or kick caused by a chalk mark on the cue ball, the number of side spin shots possible with a single application of chalk before miscuing, the miscue limit for maximum side spin, and how long chalk marks persist on the cue ball after multiple shots. A link to the original video is in the YouTube video description. Since the original video came out, I have gotten many requests to test additional chalk brands, and I have. Results for all of the chalks I have tested to date can be found at this link in the video description. So far, I've tested Master, Master Preflag, Lava, Blue Diamond, Kamui, Silver Cup, Magic Chalk, Predator, Great White, and OB. Another chalk people have asked me to test recently is Teom Chalk. In this video, I show a simplified testing procedure that anyone can easily do on their own, and I test Teom Chalk in a direct comparison with Master. To encourage people to test chalks on their own, I've decided to recommend and demonstrate only two easy-to-perform tests, the number of shots before a miscue and miscue limit. Before testing, be sure to use a paper towel to clean off any chalk currently on the tip. You can also use a tip shaper tool to further remove any remaining chalk and to ensure the tip surface is the same before each set of tests. First, I will test the original version of Teom chalk to see how many shots can be hit without chalking before I miscue results. It is important to orient the cue the same way for each shot to make sure the same part of the tip is hitting the cue ball each time. To help ensure this, I make sure the shaft logo is pointing straight up with each shot. I'm using an elephant practice ball to make sure I target the same spot on the cue ball for every test. I align the black stripe vertically and make sure the center of the tip is aimed at the center of the side of the red circle. If you don't have a practice ball handy, you can use a striped ball and aim at the edge of the stripe instead. Make sure you chalk carefully before each set of tests. When I applied the Teom chalk, I noticed that it seems a little more powdery and less smooth than other chalks I've tested, and it seems more difficult to get a uniform coating on the tip. Part of this could be due to color, because the tan-colored chalk doesn't obscure the dark tip color as easily as standard blue chalk does. Now hit the shots, being careful to use as consistent a speed as possible on each shot. Be sure to clean the chalk mark off the cue ball between each shot by rubbing vigorously. Then continue shooting without chalking the tip. That was five shots before a miscue. Then rechalk the tip and shoot another set of shots on the other side for comparison purposes. That was six shots before a miscue. Now I will do a miscue limit test for the original Teom chalk. For this test, hit a bunch of shots close to where you think the miscue limit should be. Be sure to chalk the tip very carefully before each one of these shots. Here's the most side spin I was able to get. Looking at the cue ball after the shot, notice where the chalk mark is. Here, it was in the middle of the right side of the red circle. Here's an example miscue. Here, the chalk mark was on the outer part of the red circle, so the miscue limit appears to be on the red circle, which is why the red circle is there. Now I will test the newer version 2 of Teom chalk. Again, be sure to thoroughly clean and scuff the tip between each set of tests. Then chalk the tip very carefully. Here, I'm just showing the right side test, but both sides had five hits before a miscue. Up. 
I also did a MISQ limit test for version 2 and got similar results as with the original version. With these tests, I could detect no difference in performance between the original and version 2 Taom chalk. For comparison purposes, I did the same set of tests with master chalk. Here, I'm only showing the left side with 7 shots before a MISQ, but the right side was similar with 6 shots. The master MISQ limit test results were similar to the Taom results. Although, the best hit with master was slightly farther from center as compared to the best Taom shots, with the master chalk mark on the outer part of the red circle as opposed to the center of the red circle. The previous sets of tests were done with a hard layered tip on a maple shaft. For comparison purposes, I decided to see how the chalks compare with a softer, non-layered tip on a Predator Revo shaft. Both master and Taom lasted four shots before a miscue in all four tests. I am showing only the left side test for each. Again, there does not appear to be a significant difference between the performance of Master and Taom chalks. Although, Master did slightly better with both the number of shots before MISQ test and the MISQ limit test using the harder layered tip. One marketing claim I've heard about Taom chalk is that it is less likely to cause cling, skid, or kick, so I decided to test this also. I have two balls frozen with the line of centers heading straight up table, and I'm hitting the first ball squarely at slow speed to see how much the second ball throws naturally with the ball surfaces clean. You can see that the ball throws quite a lot for a slow speed frozen combo, but this is a normal amount of throw for this type of shot. Now I'm adding chalk smudges to both the frozen balls to see the effects of cling, skid, or kick, which is an excessive or more than expected amount of throw. Notice how much more throw there is when there is chalk at the ball contact point. Here's the result with master chalk added, and here's the result with Taom chalk added. They both create similar amounts of cling, skid, or kick. As I pointed out earlier, it seemed like Taom chalk was a little more difficult to apply to the tip, and it didn't seem to coat the tip as thickly, so maybe the chalk is also less likely to stick to the cue ball. If this is the case, cling, skid, or kick might occur less frequently with Taom chalk. Unfortunately, due to its light color, it is very difficult to see how long Taom chalk persists on the cue ball, as I was able to check with the other chalks in the original video. Regardless, if the chalk mark from the current hit or a previous shot ends up at the contact point between the cue ball and object ball, cling, skid, or kick will result, no matter what chalk brand you are using. See the Kling, Skid, Kick video and resource page links in the video description for more information about what causes Kling, Skid, or Kick and how to limit how often it occurs. Since I've mentioned proper chalking a few times, I thought I should end by demonstrating the generally recommended way to chalk properly. Instead of drilling a hole in the center of the chalk, as most people do in bars and taverns, a better approach is to rub or brush the chalk across the tip as you turn the shaft like this. Do so with force, and be sure to hold the cue at an angle so you can see the tip as you apply the chalk to make sure you are getting adequate coverage. When you are done, the tip should be uniformly coated, especially close to the edges where the chalk is most needed. If you use this technique, the chalk will start out looking like this, and then like this. And after lots of use, channels will appear like this. With this technique, you will be able to use more of the chalk and be less likely to scar up the ferrule as compared to the drill a hole in the center of the chalk approach. After all of the chalk testing I have done during and since the original video, my conclusions have not changed. If you chalk properly before each shot, like most good players do, it doesn't really matter which chalk brand you use. They all have very similar miscue limits, so the amount of side spin you can apply is practically the same with all chalks. Now, if you want to go many shots without chalking, or if you don't chalk properly, you might prefer one of the chalks that remain effective on the tip longer, as shown by the number of shots before miscue tests. Some chalks do tend to stick to the cue ball more than others, so cling, skid, or kick could happen more frequently with these chalks. Regardless of the type of chalk used, if a chalk mark ends up at the contact point between the cue ball and object ball, cling, skid, or kick will occur. My final advice is, don't worry so much about the chalk you use. 
If you are miscuing, it is probably because of you, not the chalk. Make sure you chalk carefully and properly before each shot, and clean chalk marks off the cue ball every chance you get, before each break and every time you have ball in hand. Again, see the video description for links to related videos and resource pages. And please consider using the simple tests in this video to test chalks on your own. It is not that difficult and it doesn't take very long. Objective testing is better than subjective conjecture or hearsay, and it is much better than listening to marketing hype from people who sell chalk. The next time you doubt the effectiveness of your chalk, or somebody claims their chalk is better than yours, just do the simple tests demonstrated in this video to come up with an objective conclusion on your own.